Sometimes the most effective and powerful solutions are right in front of us, yet some of the potential is only sometimes recognized. This is about using available knowledge and technology to reduce climate warming greenhouse gas emissions to zero, while at the same time creating a new economic model for housing, transportation, and, well, life on Earth. This is the story of Aptura, the right climate solution, and that EV everyone will eventually go for. Welcome to EV Comet. Here we talk about the latest news and the EV industry's exciting developments. If you are already subscribed, welcome back. If you are new here and like our content, please subscribe and like our videos. It encourages us to make more. In a recent video, Aptura informs us that their solar panels installed on cars are in production and provides some background information on how they came to be. It was challenging and wasn't just some panels to the car's exterior. The companies that Aptura collaborates with first believed that the design for a solar car, or at least the method Aptura was trying to achieve, just wasn't feasible, as was mentioned in the beginning of the video. If you're looking for a solar cell that can bend not just in one direction but two and still be strong enough to withstand the rigors of riding around in a car, there's no automotive supplier you can go to and order cells. The technology didn't exist. Why? Because it's a huge demand. Bending the solar cell in one direction is difficult enough. Bending it in two directions would almost certainly break or crack it. As a result, most vehicle-mounted solar cells have hitherto only been seen on relatively flat portions of vehicles, such as the roof. But it's worse than not snapping the panels during production. If they are under too much stress and are on the verge of cracking, they are unlikely to survive. We're talking about 20 years of heat, cold, vibrations, shocks, rain, hail, snow, blowing sand, people sitting or leaning on the car, and an onslaught of ultraviolet, infrared, and visible light. Remember that solar cells convert only a small amount of that visible energy. Still, that energy also seeks to break down and discolor whatever you put over the cells to protect them. So it's a completely different game than fixed solar or installing solar panels on top of something like a motorhome or semi-truck trailer. Aptura had to do extensive testing as a result. The vehicle needed a precise form for the best aerodynamic efficiency and to cover as much of the vehicle with solar as possible. Thus, they had to do this two-axis design. With the help of these two, they could create a car with a good solar range. But more critically, they could not create a design they could produce in small quantities. To produce a million copies quickly enough to fulfill Aptura's orders and cover many further demands, they required a strategy and a design that would operate effectively. That made what was already a difficult task even more difficult. Why this matters beyond Aptura, why does this matter aside from Aptura? As realists and supporters of what will be the most efficient car ever, we understand that a two-seater vehicle with an unusual design is unlikely to displace a whole industry. It doesn't have to do that because even in niche sectors, there's much money to earn. Aptura also intends to produce additional vehicles with larger wheels and more interior space slash seating. However, even with this, the technical difficulty of getting enough miles per kilowatt hour to achieve a good range from the limited number of kilowatt hours of energy the solar cells can collect forces the use of unorthodox design strategies, even with larger vehicles. Although it be improved, something similar to the Dimaxion would be required to extract enough efficiency from a larger vehicle. But just like battery technology, solar technology is still developing. Solar cells on the mass market have an efficiency peak of about 24%, with 30% efficient cells on the horizon. This means that when technology advances, solar cells will be able to catch a lot more energy in the future. You'd extract twice as much power from a car's surface if it is 40% efficient, a technology currently being developed. A car like the Aptera may add 120 miles of range on a good day if they can reach 90% efficiency, which is a definite possibility. Conventional automotive companies will want to add panels to their vehicles whenever solar cells improve. Adding 40 to 50 miles to a more conventional vehicle's range per day would be worth the extra cost of adding solar. With folding designs, they could offer even more range. Companies probably wouldn't be able to accomplish it if a company like Aptera hadn't pioneered vehicle-mounted two-axis flexible solar panels. But now that the tricky bits are figured out, it will be simpler to incorporate tomorrow's more effective panels into upcoming automobiles. Outside the automotive industry, the development of solar technology is just beginning. It has been around for a while, but as it got better, it ended up on many rooftops and will soon be on the roofs of cars. Ultimately, we're going to start noticing solar technology everywhere. A team in Australia printed their roll-up solar panel earlier this year and then drove it around the country to demonstrate how well it functioned. 
Their concept is the best option to begin dispersing solar panels due to the thin film and low cost. The world, however, can be a harsh place. Let's quickly take a look at what recent research on housing reveals. According to data published by Wayform, the housing crisis could impact 1.6 billion people by 2025, the World Bank says. The world needs to build 96,000 new affordable homes daily to house the estimated 3 billion people who will need adequate housing by 2030, UN Habitat says. These two issues are at odds, isn't it more expensive to construct carbon-neutral or even carbon-negative homes? With both issues could be resolved simultaneously using current techniques, resources, and technology. R. Bookminster Fuller, American architect, designer, inventor, and writer best known for his geodesic domes, believed in the ability of technological advancement to do more and more with less and less, until eventually, you can do everything with nothing, that is, an accelerating increase in the efficiency of achieving the same or more output, products, services, information, etc. Before delving into the formula for considerably increasing affordable housing while combating climate change, it's worthwhile to begin with an analog from sustainable transportation design. Electric vehicles had existed in basic form since the 1830s over two decades before the oil business was formally established in the United States. However, it took 163 years for efficiency and battery technology to be improved sufficiently to make transportation as affordable in an EV as in an internal combustion engine vehicles. One may argue that this achievement could have occurred nearly a century earlier if not for the threat to the fossil fuel industry. The internal combustion engine vehicle's history is frequently neglecting efficiency until just burning more fuel without restrictions became an issue. In the early 1930s, R. Bookminster Fuller created a Dymaxion car that could transport up to 11 passengers, achieve speeds of up to 90 miles per hour, and get 30 miles per gallon. In 2011, over 80 years later, the combined average mileage for cars and consumer trucks was less than 30. Then the EV era is finally here. Tesla prioritizes vehicle efficiency and has made great advances in attaining a long battery range and boosting affordability with the Model 3. The three primary areas where EV efficiency may be improved are materials, weight, highly aerodynamic design, drag coefficient, and battery design. And now we're talking about Aptera, a startup company that wants to commence mass production of its radically designed EV in 2023, taking the efficiency focus a step further by building a solar-powered vehicle, with every part of the design ultra-optimized. Interestingly, Aptera plans to manufacture a model that can drive 1,000 miles on a single charge and, in perfect conditions, never needs to be charged at all 100% self-charging via integrated solar panels. Currently, solar panels can only add 40 miles of range per day, so if you travel less than 40 miles per day on average, you will never need to plug into grid power. So how do they manage it? Special hyper-efficient PV panels, a drag coefficient roughly half that of a Tesla Model 3, and an aerodynamic design that looks as insane as you can imagine, yes, and only three wheels. Suppose this story continues and companies like Aptera can achieve additional incremental gains in efficiency to produce even better solar-powered cars. In that case, transportation could become affordable at an inconceivable level in the current economic system. Think about purchasing a reasonably priced automobile for $25,000 and never having to pay to charge it for the life of the vehicle. This is close to an illustration of the quote, until eventually, you can achieve everything with nothing. With Aptera in your driveway, you'll never have to pay a dime for transportation for the life of your car. Amazing, right? We thought so. If you liked this video, hit the like button and send us your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.